What's my name? Mom might have lied to me about my name. It could have been Tom or Sydney or Bartholomew Cubbins. I wouldn't put it past her. She fabricated much about what's essential to me. Father played along. He left the naming of things to her. Eight years after I tried to help Mom die in 1995, I found it. Back then she had asked me to murder her in their Sunnyvale home. She'd be damned if she would have George do it. Her Neptune Society friend Lottie had given me that society's euthanasian formula. Six Vicodin, downed with a gulp of whiskey, chased by six Valium and another shot. I would have doubled the mixture considering Mom's obesity. The nurses helped her, however, with that extra morphine drip on Mom's final day at Kaiser Permanente's oncology ward. I found my birth certificate under her useless panties and bras in the bedroom drawer of their cheap dresser. I was born at Donald Sharp Memorial Community Hospital in San Diego. The attending physician was Dr. Francis L. Rook. It's printed in the official boxes. It must be correct. My first name is John, middle Dwight, last Dorrance. I should be over it, but my real birthday, December 25th, 1957, looks wrong on the government form. Mom always told me I happened during May. My grade school friends and I celebrated every May by eating ice cream cake and fishing for birthday favors. Father hid behind a blue bedsheet hung in the corner of the family room. We'd throw our kite stream fishing lines over the Maple Leaf Pond. Then George would attach exotic birthday favors, which Mom had purchased in Chinatown, to our clothespin hooks. My aunts and uncles and grandparents all branches of the Canadian maple tree will never know otherwise. The extended family believes my birthday is May 16, 1958. I shouldn't tell them. Not even my two favorite cousins, Brenda and Sandy, now both grown old in Calgary, Alberta. It hides the fact that I am a type of bastard. According to Mom, Granny would never have talked to her again if she had discovered her daughter's mistake. Mom and George moved to the States, California, so they could conceal the Christmas gift from everyone who mattered, could shift the birth date to nine months preceding Mom's unwanted wedding. Granny's dead now. Much like scars, however, Mom's lies will always be there. These parts of my true identity I learned as a high school junior. She told me while curled into a fetal position on the closet floor.